folks, hope you're doing well. Ray here. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the CPU in Studio One. And many of you, like me, like creating uh, heavy metal, uh, metal tracks, hard rock kind of tracks. And if you're like me, one of the things you run into when you're using your Studio One, when you're recording your tracks, uh, is the CPU issue. Uh, especially if you are using Easy Drummer, su uh, Superior Drummer, I specifically find some issues with the latency when I'm using this tool. So uh, if you're like me, you like to record your guitar tracks, I like to build my drum track out in Easy Drummer, and then I play to that, and I record my tracks to that, and a click track. Um, it's just what works best for me, and I find it the easiest and the most enjoyable to do. Unfortunately, one of the issues I run into is when I'm playing to my Easy Drummer, you can see it pulled up here, when I'm playing to my Easy Drummer, what I'm running into is the issue of the latency. So as I'm playing along, uh, my CPU really starts to drain. And as you build these tracks, like you see over here, this particular song has something like 45 tracks on it. The issue I run into is that my CPU really starts to get overloaded. Uh, even with cutting out all sorts of different uh, software and, and any other type of um, systems running in the background, it will still drain my CPU. And you can see that if you go down here uh, under the performance, when you click on that, what you're going to see is, you can see just from sitting here, here's my Easy Drummer right here, and it's sitting at, even with, max, with maximum uh, dropout protection on, uh, it's sitting at 20, uh, which means it's, it, it's draining quite heavy compared to a lot of other things. So the first thing I want to talk about here is when you are, and you may know this, but I want to make sure I covered here uh, if you run into the same issues that I do. When you're recording your guitar, when you've got your drum track ready and you're ready to go ahead and record your drums, what you want to do is you want to click down on here on that performance and you want to open up your performance monitor. And what you're looking to do here is set this to minimum okay and when you're setting it to minimum you see how it's it's kind of spiking up there you see my CPU go up to 65 I've got a lot of different things the song has got a lot of different tracks and it's got the easy drummer really kind of draining a, a lot of that by setting it to minimum what you're doing now is you're 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 maximizing your latency so that the song is gonna have the best quality of recording if I set the maximum, or if I set my latency to maximum, what I'm gonna find now is it's gonna have, it's gonna save my CPU, but it's gonna have this kind of echo reverb in the background that I really don't want. I want my track as you know, clear or as clean as possible. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set this to minimum, and then I'm gonna turn these off. You see my CPU up here drop drastically down here. I'll turn it back on, you can see. Turn it back on, you see it go way back up to 63, 64. Turn those off and then record. And what I'm doing then is I'm able to save on my CPU and I'm able to set my dropout protection at minimum. So you're probably now saying, okay, well, what about your drummer? If you're turning off your easy drummer, how are you then able to actually record without a song? You know, you could, I guess you could use the click track, but I like to play through the drums. I think it's just you know the way I've kind of always done it. Well, here's the second part. So once you've set your performance monitor and you've set your CPU to the minimum protection and turned off all the different um, uh, tools that you have running in the background, what I then like to do is over here, you'll see that I have my Easy Drummer and I've built out my drum track. What I'll then do is I'll go in here and I'll click on this little drop down. I'll go up to track. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to export this to a, uh, to a WAV file. You can do it to a MIDI or a WAV. I like to use the WAV file. Uh, you can try it out and see what works best. But when you click on this Save as a WAV file, what it's then going to do is going to save it to your hard drive. So let's say you click on this here. It's going to ask you if you want to save it as a 16-bit or a 24-bit. When you click on export, it's then going to um, you know, it's going to ask you where you want to put it. I've already saved it, so I'm not going to do it again. But um, you can then put it on your hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Once it's now saved a copy of that Easy Drummer drum track that you've built down here, once it's saved it to your hard drive, you can then go up here to Edit, I'm sorry, Song, Import File, and when you click on this, it's going to pull up 
and you can then go into where you've you know downloaded that song or downloaded that WAV file and double click on it. Once you double click on it, it's going to pull that track up and you can see I've got one saved here. So here's my easy drummer track and then here's my drum wave temper. I put I called it drum wave temporary file when I saved it. And what it's doing now is I can actually have this turned off. Let's say I turn it back on, you can see it still jumps up. So even if I turn everything else off and I still play with my easy drummer, I still risk with my dropout protection set at minimum, I still risk a little bit of that latency issue with it coming on and draining the CPU and starting to kind of create that echo in the background. So what I can now do is actually turn this completely off, set my, my dropout protection to minimum, and then record my song to the WAV file. So I've got that turned off. So what I'll do is actually hit play right now. And what it's doing is it's actually playing that WAV file and the other songs, the other tracks, it's a little heavy right now because I have all the guitars on it. But that WAV file, and I've kind of A-B'd it back and forth, that the, the recording of the Easy Drummer and the WAV file um, actually sound almost identical when I play them. And then you can also go into that drum WAV file if you want, and if you want to keep it, you can actually then go back in if you wanted to. You could EQ it, you could adjust it, you could do whatever you wanted. But the plan then is you could actually delete that temporary drum WAV file when you're all done and then just you know, export your recording when you're when you're completed and, and mix down and do all that kind of stuff. So again, really what the whole point of this is, is to be able to record your guitar, your bass, all anything else you need, but not have to have your easy drummer in the background sucking all your CPU out. You can actually, re, you know, save that WAV file and insert it and have a outstanding temporary WAV file. You can even use it and keep it in the background if you wanted to. Um, but it's just one of those things where you can put it back there, you can play to it, uh, and then you can adjust your settings. So when I'm ready to record, I've got my WAV file playing in the background, I've got my metronome playing in the background as well, and then I can set this to minimum and go ahead and hit record. When I'm done recording, I can then go back up here and I can turn this on maximum again when I'm playing back, because when I'm playing back, it's not gonna have any effect on uh, any latency issues or anything like that. Um, it's just when you're recording, you wanna have that set to minimum so that you're having the maximum recording quality and sound. You don't have that weird echo fuzzy background sound. So then you can turn these back on when you're ready to do that. Um, you can leave this on or you can just work, you know, work with your, your WAV file in the background like I have been. And then when I go ahead and hit play, you'll see I'm still only at about 29 and I don't have any cutout issues or any problems. So real quick, that's just kind of a couple of tips that I have found. If you've run into CPU issues and you're using uh, either, you know, uh, Easy Drummer or something similar to that, you can then, as I mentioned before, export that copy, that, that track into a WAV file and then save it on your hard drive and then import it into your track and completely save your CPU when you're playing. So now I can record as many things as I want. Again, as I said here, I've got an older computer and I've got 45, 46 tracks and it plays with no problem and it records when I turn all of these off and I set this back to minimum, it records very, very well without any cutouts or any issues like that. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and put them down in the comments section. Um, if you have any uh, thing you'd like to add or any tips that have worked for you, I'd love to know them. I'm always looking for ways to, to, to capture a better recording. Um, if you haven't subscribed and you'd like to, I would love to have you join. Um, and I think that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you, again, if you have anything you'd like to add, I would love to hear it in the comments. So uh, thanks a lot. Have a great day.